know five reasons why you should start the keto diet? I've got your five reasons right here, honey, and I'm gonna give them to you in this video. Tune in to learn more. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I am Kelly Alexa, fitness fanatic, confidence coach, serial entrepreneur, and most recently, keto convert. That's right, keto convert. I used to be a keto skeptic, but a little over a year ago, I went keto at the nudging of my functional medicine doctor. And it's one of the best decisions I ever made because this person right here lost 36 inches and 30 pounds by going keto. And like I said before, best decision I ever made. I had tremendous success. So obviously you can tell that's going to flavor what I'm going to be talking to you about in today's video. I'm a strong advocate for the power of keto and I'm going to explain why when we get down to the nitty gritty of why I'm going to share with you five and a little bit more reasons why you should consider going on the keto diet. Let's get started. All right, everybody, you know the drill. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel while you're here. And also when you hit that subscribe button, make sure that you also hit the cute little bell button so that you are notified whenever we push out new videos. Right now we are pushing out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And sometimes, who knows, I might just go nutty and throw out a new video on a Tuesday or a Thursday. But for right now, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But you know, if you hit the little bell button, you'll always be in the know. So make sure you do that too. All right, everybody, welcome back. And for those of you who might be um, new to my channel, before we dive in and I just go right into five reasons why I think you should consider going on the keto diet. I started it June, June 1st, 2021. It is now September 28th, 2022, as I record this. I'm still keto, so this is my lifestyle. Um, it is definitely a lifestyle, and that's gonna be one of the things that I talk about today. But just to give all of you who are watching, those of, those of you who've been watching me for a while, this might be a little redundant for you, so I'll make it quick. But for those of you who are new, I'll just give you a brief summary. Um, the reason that I went keto, the, the reason that my functional medicine doctor, you know, had me go keto was that prior to that, I had been, you know, trying to lose weight. I had been, you know, I call myself a fitness fanatic. I still do, always have been. I've always been interested in fitness. I founded my own fitness company in 2011. Um, I've been interested in fitness ever since... Um, gosh, I think when I just before graduating college, um, when I, when I discovered when I had gained weight, actually, I gained a bunch of weight, uh, before graduating college and I had to figure out how to get, get the, get the alcoholic weight off. And, uh, I started working out to, uh, share fitness tape. Uh, these are tapes, VCR tapes, share fitness tapes, uh, at the time and the firm workouts. I think those were some of the first workouts that I started working out to, but this was step aerobics. And this was also back in the days of Susan powder, um, P O T for those of you who have never heard of this before, P O T P O W T E R stop the insanity. It was back in the fat free days. Um, so that was, I'm going off on a major digression, uh, but I've been a fitness fanatic forever. And, and again, um, prior to going keto, you know, for probably the better part of five to 10 years, I had been working out my, but my hormones probably started changing. Honestly, right around the year I was getting a divorce, which was 2007. Um, I can look back then and see, I didn't realize it at the time, but that's really when I started to experience, um, body temperature changes, skin changes, um, uh, body weight changes. Uh, again, I didn't realize that it was hormones that were changing at the time. I didn't attribute it to that. All I focused on was the fact that I was dealing with, um, you know, skin bumps that were going on and I was gaining weight and I couldn't lose weight, but it took a while for the, for, for those hormone issues to get worse. And then, you know, closer to recent years, it just got worse and worse and worse. And I was working out all the time in a caloric deficit all the time and just unable to lose weight. 
Um, I was on bioidentical hormones. I was getting my blood work done. I was eating, you know, all the right foods, having, you know, fitness food, meal delivery services sent to me, um, seeing a functional medicine doctor, you know, spending a lot of money to try to get to the bottom of things, working with a personal trainer, um, working out six days a week, doing all the right things. But I was just basically staying in the same place. It wasn't that I was, you know, gaining weight. I wasn't like getting fatter and fatter and fatter, but I was just staying in the same place. So I was working out religiously, dieting religiously and relentlessly. And I was constantly, I wasn't weighing myself because I was terrified of the scale. Um, but I was just in this state of what I now know to be approximately 25 to 30 pounds overweight just constantly. And I was uncomfortable in my own body. I was embarrassed by my own body. Here I was running a fitness company that I'd founded and I was mortified by my own body, embarrassed by the fact that I worked out all the time and I couldn't get my body to respond. It was just an awful experience. So when I finally um, switched to this recent doctor, Dr. Ruthie Harper, who is in Austin, Texas, um, she is fantastic. She is my current doctor. She is the one who um, put me on keto. I didn't know when I hired her that that was the diet plan she was going to put me on. Um, she worked with me for about six months to, to straighten out my hormones a little bit more. And then when she felt that my body was ready to diet again, I had been on a reverse diet. Um, before that, uh, we had, I, I was on a reverse diet. I'll link down below to um, a podcast I did explaining what are, and for those of you that are wondering, I did a podcast explaining what a reverse diet is, why I did it. It's one of the best decisions I, I made. It was very, very good for me. So in case you're wondering like, what is that? What's that all about? I explained that down below. I'll link to it down below. Um, but she put me on keto and, um, I did not want to do it. I thought keto, for those of you that are watching that might have this attitude, um, I thought keto was a joke. I thought it was a fad diet. I thought it was only for people who weren't serious fitness people. I thought it was, you know, for people who didn't take dieting seriously. I thought it was, you know, for people who just wanted a, a shortcut. Um, I, I just thought it was the, the, the thing that people did when they, you know, it, it was like, this is what, like the, the, <laughs> the Walmart of, of fitness or nutrition. Um, and I love Walmart, so I shouldn't say it that, that way. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what you do when you don't take nutrition and, and dieting and fitness seriously. You go and you go keto. And I had a horrible, horrible opinion of it. And I really don't know why I did because I really wasn't informed about the details of it. I just had a misinformation, but that's true about so many things, right? That's true about a lot of us. We can be so skeptical and judgmental about things that we really have no right to be. And I will fully admit that to you. So I did not want to go keto. I pushed back. My doctor um, sent me a lot of information to review, a lot of podcasts, a lot of books to read, a lot of articles to read. And I finally begrudgingly gave in went keto. And it was, like I said, the best decision ever, because once I started following her macro plan for me, um, and in the beginning, I'll be honest with you guys, I, I really didn't know what to eat. Um, I, I was very lost. I was guessing <laughs> there's a whole reason why I have, since I've had the success that I've had, I have started, uh, or, or I've created my own heavy plug, um, my own uh, online boot camp, K Kelly's Keto Boot Camp for Women, because I, I remember my own experience, but I've had so many women come to me saying this exact same thing. They're like, okay, I want to go keto. I don't know what to eat. I don't know what macros to have. I don't know. It, usually what it is, is I don't know what to eat. I don't know how many meals to have. Should I do fasting? Should I do intermittent fasting? Should I do fasting? Should I do like, what do I do? 
that's they're they're very lost they don't know how to eat how much to eat how many calories to eat what foods to eat what not to eat they're very very confused about everything they think that they should only be eating red meat they think that they can't eat chicken they think they can't have salads um, everybody's confused and nobody knows where to look um, i was the same way when i first started i was eating just a bunch of dips um, and fat bombs. And I think a lot of people get off on the wrong foot. I figured things out and very quickly I got into a really nice groove where I was losing like a pound to a pound and a half a week. And I very quickly, again, I, I don't want to say quickly in the wrong way. It's not like I was losing five pounds a week. I, I was consistently losing a pound to maybe a pound and a quarter, sometimes a pound and a half a week. So that kind of consistent, steady weight loss. And then I, again, like I said, I lost uh, 30 pounds and 36 inches off my body and I have kept it off. And this has been my lifestyle. So it's the best decision I ever made. I felt better, um, immediately lost all of the, the bloating, my headaches decreased. Um, the, blo the bloating and the tummy aches that I used to have all the time going away was a great, in fact, that was going to be one of the, that's, that was not one of the things that I noted as why you should go, but <laughs> I should note that that's, that that's one reason you should consider going is that you will feel better. That's not one of the top five reasons that I have here, but, um, I do remember how quickly I felt felt better. And that is what I hear from so many of the women who take my online keto boot camp is they say, I can't believe how much better I feel. You know, I have energy. Um, one of my clients, Rakane, who lost 16 pounds in her first month, um, she said she had the energy to walk her dog where she couldn't, she couldn't walk her dog around the block. I, I hope I'm not misquoting her. Um, but she posted that in the group, like, I used to not be able to walk my dog like this, you know, and have the energy to, to walk my dog around the block for, you know, the full walk. And now I can take him. She said, I just love that I have that energy. So that's my story, my keto story. Of course, I'm going to link up at the end of this video to my keto playlist here on YouTube. There's tons of videos. If you're interested in learning more, you can watch any number of the videos I posted here on my keto experience. And I'm happy to answer any questions um, that you might have, leave them in the comments below. Um, but let's dive into what I feel are my top five uh, reasons why you should consider going on the keto diet. Let's get started. So number one, if you are over 40 and you are not losing weight, it's highly likely from, <laughs> this is coming from my own experience, um, what I kind of just told you, and also certainly what I have learned in doing a lot of research. Since having the success that I've had, I wanted to understand why keto worked. I've done a lot more reading. I've done a lot more uh, talking with my doctor and and again, just wanting to understand how and why this all works. Here's the deal. If you're over 40 and you're like me and you're a woman in particular, it's highly likely if you've been stuck trying to lose weight and you're like me, you've been working out, you're eating right, you're not able to lose weight. Here's the deal. You probably have insulin resistance. And because you probably have insulin resistance, this is the best diet approach for attacking insulin resistance on the planet. Don't believe me? Do some Googling. That's all I'm going to say. I don't need to say anything else. Do some Googling, do some research, do some reading. Everything that you will find out there will back me up. I can point to myriad sources that will, that will say the same thing. The keto diet, and the thing is, is that, you know, that's, that's one of my other points I'm gonna make here. You don't have to be 100% keto for the rest of your life. There's phases. You, you go on keto to address the insulin resistance, and then you 
lose the weight and you get to a better place. And then you can start doing, you can get to the place where I am, where you can start reintroducing carbs and, and, and getting to the place where you can, um, have more carbs in your life. Sometimes some people can have more carbs in their life all the time. Sometimes people like me who have a heavier degree of insulin resistance can have more carbs in their life. Sometimes not all the time. I'm, I've learned that I will really have to watch my carb intake pretty much the rest of my life, but it's okay because I now know what I will be able to do to keep my weight at a really, really great place. And that's awesome because I, I now, now know I'll never be back where I was before, where I was just struggling and I could never get my body to work. Now I know how I can get my body to work because my body's working. So number one, it, the number one reason why you should consider going keto, if you're a woman, you're over 40, you're struggling to lose weight, you're working out, you're in a caloric deficit, you're dieting, and nothing is working for you, you probably are in the same boat I was, and this is probably going to be the magical miracle solution for you, just like it was for me. And the good thing is, is like I said before, it can be something that can work for a time period and then you can kind of slowly come out of it and, and it can be a lifestyle. It's the most wonderful, wonderful thing on the planet. Trust me. Number two, if you like to eat and you like food, you will love being on keto. And the thing is, is some people go, wait a second. Um, because people automatically think, if I go keto, I have to give up bread. I have to give up this, I have to give. Yes, you're giving up things like bread, right? And, and like in my case, I gave up, you know, gluten too. Not everybody has to do that when they go keto. But, um, you know, you're counting your carbs and you're watching that. And again, not everybody, in my case, I have Hashimoto's. And so there's things that my doctor, you know, she's like, I want you gluten-free and I want you keto. Um, you know, it is just mind boggling to me how many things you can have and how many options there are and how many unbelievably delicious foods. I have never once cheated since I went keto and I am somebody who absolutely loves food. You guys, I have never needed to cheat because there's so many delicious foods and food combinations. And there's, when you think about how many millions of blogs and bloggers and influencers and the ability to go on Instagram or Pinterest or YouTube and find people who are um, keto and are making the most outrageously delicious combinations that will inspire you. And then not only can you make their recipes, but then you'll make their recipes and, and do probably what Steve and I do, which is be like, okay, I made this. And then you'll go, oh, wait, what if I add this? What if I add this? And I could take this and do this because it'll give you so many more ideas. And then you'll just you just get creative and you just come up with all of these other things. And it's just, there's diversification is the key. It's the key to success in everything you do. And that's how you keep your taste buds happy. And I'm just telling you, like there is an entire world of food. And that's the beautiful thing is that you, you get to enjoy food rich with flavor because you're eating protein and fat and you know th the thing is is that when you eat foods with healthy fats and and good amounts of protein and then you know the right amount of vegetables and limited fruits you know there's so much flavor to it and you'll be so satisfied it's just so if you love food like you're in the right place okay that's number two number three why should you try keto uh it works delivers results. You want to lose weight? You're in the right place. That's all I have to say about that. Number four, it's easy to customize. Um, have you ever thought, <laughs> sometimes it cracks me up. I, I see a lot of, I've seen a lot of people lately, a lot of women who've been on Facebook um, following um, some other women and they're going on these like liquid diets. I think that they're liquid diets. I don't know what company it is, but it's like, 
I can tell that they're going on these like, you know, pre powdered, you know, whatever, like, and don't even get me started because sometimes I just, I don't, I don't want to sound n super negative and critical about another company just because it's another company. I just am a fan of anything that's going to teach you how to live and function on your own. And to me, when you go and you buy something like a Nutrisystem or anything that, that doesn't help you make choices or learn how to cook on your own or eat on your own, and somebody's just basically handing you a bunch of boxes of stuff and you're like, you know, pouring it in a blender and going, okay, this is great. And then you're done with it. And afterwards you're like, oh, wow, what do I eat? If it's not astronaut food. Um, and look what happened to Oprah when she did that one liquid diet. I mean, it's just like, it just kind of doesn't make sense. Um, it's not teaching behavioral change. There's a reason that um, when bariatric surgery has the absolutely abysmal rates that it does because it doesn't teach behavioral change. I mean, I could go into that. That's a whole other subject. But um, the, the thing that's wonderful about keto is if you're going out to eat, Anywhere you go, it's so easy to order something that's keto. If you're out with your friends, at, if you're at a friend's house, if you're at a party, if you're at home, if you're cooking for your family. My husband is not keto. He and I make meals. I don't have to make something special for me and something different for him. We eat the same foods and we both, he loves everything that I make. Um, you, don't, you don't have to, I've put out a cookbook heavy plug. I'll link it down below. Um, people that have bought my cookbook say, I love making these recipes because I can make them for the whole family. And they don't have to feel like, Ooh, I'm eating keto stuff. Like it's yummy for the whole family. Um, it's really customizable. It's, it's great on the go. It's great wherever you go. You can go to a fast food place and order easy. You can go to a restaurant and order easy. You can eat at home and order easy. You can, it's just easy, easy peasy. Um, and then lastly, um, I couldn't read my own writing. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> um, like I mentioned before, obviously I said I went keto in June, June 1st of 2021. And I said, it's now September 28th. The great thing is, is that to what I was mentioning before about some of these, um, you know, I'm assuming these are liquid diets. I don't know. But when you... The great thing about keto is after you've reached your goal weight, it is very easy to then start customizing this by adding carbs back in. And, and the more that I'm learning about this, there's all of these great books that I've learned about, you know, hey, maybe you really do, like me, I have a pretty serious insulin resistance problem. So I really have to watch my carb intake. But it's actually not ideal to be strict keto the rest of your life. It's not good for your, your, your cells, your mitochondria. Um, you don't want to be that restrictive with your diet the rest of your life. That should be good for a lot of you that are like, Hey, I don't want to, I don't want to be like this rest I, I would love to be able to have bread or ice cream, you know, like, I don't want to deny myself that the rest of my life. Well, you don't have to. And that's what's great. There's a lot of books um, that I recommend within, within my course that I've also, you know, recommended on my social media, on my blog, whatever that I've read recently that teach you these lifestyle tricks um, and things that I'm about to sneeze. I feel like I'm... I felt it coming. Okay, I thought there was another one coming. Um, that you know can can help you. Um, one of the one of the books I'm going to link it down below. It's called The Glucose Revolution. Um, you know, you you start to learn how simple things like drinking apple cider vinegar can help you. You know, so that when you are having carbs, um, when you're having your carbs, you you eat them at the end of your meal, and then you have apple cider vinegar in water before a meal, and that can help. Um, decrease the glucose response. I mean, there's just all kinds of things that you can learn so that you, you can manage, um, 
you know, your, your life with, you know, if you have, again, if you have insulin resistance, like I have, and like what I'm learning, a lot more people have insulin resistance than we realize. It's a bigger epidemic than we realize. Um, but that said, it doesn't mean that you, you need to go forever without having, you know, a piece of cake or a cookie or a donut or whatever. It's just, hey, first of all, let's not um, be gorging ourselves on this stuff forever. And let's learn, like, how do we enjoy some of these things in moderation and without, you know, pushing ourselves towards a diabetic state, right? Towards something where we're making ourselves sick, you know, full of disease, right? There's ways to do that. Um, and it really is fascinating. The more that you understand how this works big picture, um, it really is. It's a, it's, it's actually very, very cool. I have learned so much and, um, it really, really, it just works. I mean, um, I will close and say this, um, I hit my goal weight just to share with you guys that, that some of this stuff, you know, a lot of people are skeptical when they think, um, you know, the whole cutting carbs thing isn't necessary. You know, you just need to count your calories. Well, guess what? You know, if you, if you, if you don't believe that this is true and, and you want to be skeptical, I, I'm the biggest walking demonstration that this is true. I mean, I was in a caloric deficit for years working out six days a week, unable to lose weight. I stayed at the exact same calories, went keto, the weight fell off of me. Okay. And then I hit my goal weight. I was, I was at my goal weight, I actually surpassed my goal weight by about four pounds. Um, and I was kind of at the point where I was a little bit concerned that I was like, feeling, I was, I kind of was feeling like skinny fat, like almost, I was like worried. It's kind of the point where I was like worried. I, I almost had no appetite. I was worried that I was getting a little bit like too, not that I was like too skinny, but I just was worried. Like my boobs were getting really small and I, I just, I knew I needed to work out, started work, working out again. Um, I hadn't been working out prior to that. That's another story. But um, I knew I needed to eat more and um, I wasn't eating enough. I didn't have, you know, it's kind of like this, uh, kind of a little bit of a bad cycle I'd gotten in. I wasn't eating enough. I didn't have an appetite. I hadn't been working out and I really knew I wanted to, to work out. So I had this consult with my doctor and she said, well, let's start, you know, we really want to start reintroducing carbs for you. Let's test this out. She said, um, just know that you're probably going to start seeing some weight gain on the scale. You've got to be ready for that. And it's going to be hard for you, you know, mentally, you're probably going to see your weight jump on the scale <clears throat> five to seven pounds, like right away. That's what happens when you reintroduce carbs. Carbs will make you retain water. You've, you know, you, it's just going to happen. Like you need to expect it. You need to be okay with it. And I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And, um, so I started reintroducing some carbs I wasn't increasing the amount of food I was eating. I just brought in apples, started having some acai bowls, and um, I'm trying to think, oh, was doing some more oatmeal. Now, before I was having a, a glucose monitor on my arm, these are some of the things, aside from the acai bowls, that I had tested. I tested rice, I tested oatmeal. All these things did not increase my glucose uh, reading or my... I don't know if that test your, yeah, test your glucose. Um, none of them spike my glucose at all. So I was like, not thinking that this would be bad at all. When Steve and I started weighing ourselves again, I hadn't weighed myself in like six months. The scale showed that I was up 10 pounds. I freaked the hell out. And then I think I, when I did weigh myself, that was like literally in the middle of the day with my clothes on. So then the next time I weighed myself, it was up eight pounds. Um, I've since cut out those carbs, gotten back to my keto, you know, strict keto, started adapting some of these, these tips from the glucose revolution, the apple cider vinegar, the walking immediately after meals, um, some of her other tips as well. And I could see that, um, and then the scale started going down. Um, but it just goes to show you that people with insulin resistance like me, you add a certain kind of carbs back in. And again, it was apples, oatmeal, 
acai bowls. I'm going to do a whole other video on acai bowls because I've learned that they are the most deceptively unhealthy, healthy food on the planet. Um, but like right there, it just showed me and I was, I was okay with it because it was like a really good lesson to learn. But I was like, holy shit, like what the hell? If that doesn't prove to you that it's not just about your caloric intake, it is about the kind of foods you're eating. What better example is there right there? Because the second I took those foods out, my body started leaning right out again, it, like immediately. Fascinating. I mean, if that doesn't inspire you to go to keto, I don't know what will. So I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have about keto. Um, ask them in the comments below. And again, at the end of this video, I'm going to link up to um, my keto playlist. I've got, I don't even know how many keto videos I've done at this point. Um, I'm also going to link down below uh, to my keto cookbook, my keto boot camp. Um, and again, I would love to hear from you what questions you have. If you've gone keto before, if you've had challenges, um, I can tell you right now from all of the women that I've worked with and coached, I don't care if you've gone keto before and you've gained weight. I don't care if you've gone keto before and you've been unable to lose weight. Every woman that I've coached before, every woman who's taken my, um, uh, my, I can't talk, my boot camp, I can guarantee you, trust me, if you do keto the right way and you follow my guidance, you can absolutely lose weight. Don't think that you can't. I can help you. So trust me, you just need to do it the right way. And I have figured that out. So if you need help, reach out, ask for it, get my cookbook, get my boot camp, or if you want private coaching, I offer that too as well. So let me know how I can help you. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Kelly O Show. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm linking up here to all of my uh, previous videos that I've published on keto. Hopefully this will help for you, be helpful for you. And if you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below.